I'm so thankful for our partnership with the Spot Athletics in Columbus, Ohio. Our offices and our studios are here, and because of our partnership, I get to offer you 10% off of any of their sport and life programs. That goes for athletes, that goes for adults, 10%. All you have to do is go to the spotathletics.com backslash get started and enter code unscripted10 in the comments. That's all you got to do. The spotathletics.com backslash get started and enter unscripted10 in the comments, and they'll get you started today. When I think about you. Unscripted Podcast. We're Tori and Shana, and you're listening to our song called When I Think About You. Available on Spotify, Apple Music, or wherever you enjoy your favorite songs. But for now, let's listen in to your host and our friend, Aaron Aaron Conrad. Conrad. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Unscripted from my studios at the Spot Athletics in Columbus, Ohio. I'm rocking my Carolina hat. I got a Carolina guy on today. Trip, man, why don't you introduce yourself and we'll go from there. Yeah, absolutely. First of all, I appreciate you having me on here. But yeah, Trip Bodenheimer originally grew up in North Carolina, Lumberton, and uh, joined the Air Force about 14 years ago. I've been teaching professional military education for the past six years. So basically teaching people how to be effective leaders out in the operational Air Force on the enlisted side. And I also on the side have a podcast called The Shadows Podcast, where we tap into social, mental, spiritual, and physical wellness by people sharing their stories and bringing their shadows out of the darkness and into the light. Well, man, I was on yours and now you get to be on mine. Told you I do not like to be interviewed. People that listen to our episodes know that I do not like to be interviewed. So good at uh, it. (laughs) I don't like to be interviewed at all, but I did enjoy being on yours and it was an honor to be on it. And and I want to pause there and say, thank you for serving our country. Thank you for committing, you know, to serving our country, man. What, what drove you to say, you know, I'm willing to give my life for this country. Like, you know what I'm saying? And I think that, man, I, I just have so much respect for anyone that has served this country. What, at what point did you decide, man, I'm going to go and I'm willing to die for, for people I may never know. Yeah, that's a good question because it, not to make light of that statement, but we have the, the Airman's Creed, one of the lines in it is I will defend my country with my life. And I was talking to the, the form or future instructors today. And I said, you really got to teach this thing to your students. And I said, you know, for me, my whole life working at a YMCA and Red Lobster, they said, would you defend Red Lobster with your life? No offense to the, the Red Lobster peeps out there, but I would have been like, no, not at all. Right, um, right. But for whatever reason, I chose to raise my hand and support and defend, you know, this country and, and get my life for it if need be. For me, I... I always looked up to my grandfather for being in the army. I always looked up to my father for his time in the Navy. And it was one of those things that the older I got, and I was still trying to figure out what I wanted to do when I grew up. The military was always just kind of right there. And we were in Sumter, South Carolina at the time, my wife and I, and it was just the recruiter's office was right there. So many friends stationed at Shaw Air Force Base. And there was just so many pros for me to join, to help give a little bit of stability to to starting a family. And then when 9-11 happened, I really wanted to join that Mm. everyone, you know, a heightened sense of patriotism around the country. And it was just something that I'd kind of put on hold because I was still going to college. But I remember my wife and I were having a conversation one day and someone said, yeah, you should, you should definitely join the military. And she said, no, you'll be deployed. You'll be gone all the time. Well, about four years later, that same conversation came up and it was, that's a really good idea. Why don't you do that? So I'm about four years behind the the curb, but uh, I just decided to join a little bit later. I was 27 years old when I joined wow. and take a great sense of pride in defending this country and, you know, learning about the history and all the, the war heroes that we've had served before us, POW, MIAs, Medal of Honor recipients, and they made the ultimate sacrifice for this country. And to be serving, you know, alongside so many of those greats is, is really cool honor for me to, to be able to do. So I love it. Love it. Well, with all respect to everybody listening, I think we gloss over Veterans Day Memorial Day as a day to have barbecues and get together. Yeah. Man, those days, those days are really important because mm-hmm. gosh, 
man, I just have so much respect for our military and anyone who has served like yourself. Thank you. Uh, and I mean that genuinely. Thank you. Because, uh, yeah, for sure. you know, man, it just, so let me ask you this again, unscripted. Where are you at with where we're at in the world today? Do you feel like the military still receives the respect that they're owed? I know, I know we, you know, we have our holidays and things like that. This is a tough yeah. question, man. I'm sorry to get you right out of the gate with a tough one. Do you, yeah. and again, we don't have to get political. It's not about political or politics. It's just, do you believe that we as a country respect and honor our veterans and those that have served and are serving? That's, that's a good question. And, and to, I won't generalize it. I'll say that I think it's just based off people's experiences. I think those that have had three members in their family or that have served, I think they definitely understand it or they've been a military brat. I think it is harder for someone who may not have had that lineage or had someone in their family who hasn't served to know what it's like on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, but just in general, yeah, I, I think we do do a pretty good job of it. I, there's some times I wish I could get that military discount when I go places, but, uh, <laughs> but no, it's all joking aside. I, I think it's, uh, I think we do a good job. I, I still like going to sporting events. And even if I'm like the last one to stand up, you know, having veterans stand up and I, I went to a, it might've been a bowl game or that was somewhere, but they were calling off each branch individually. If you've served in this branch, stand up, if you served in this branch, stand up. And seeing the, the recognition around and if, if I ever doubt, do we appreciate it or get enough recognition? I just go off base in uniform and it's, it's an outpour of people coming up to you and telling you, you know, things like, Hey, you know, my son serves or, Hey, my, my, you know, I lost a spouse overseas and just hearing people's stories. So based on my experiences, I think we're doing a pretty good job of it. Good. And let me ask you one more question. Last question regarding that. I'm in the airport and I see a guy mm -hmm. in camos, you know, I always feel weird in my head. I always thank them because yeah, yeah. I don't, under, I don't understand the hierarchy of the military and all this. I don't know, man. I, I, I guess I just never want to have this awkward moment where they're like, what are you talking about, man? But I yeah. always want, I, I always literally want to just say, man, thank you for serving. Is that, yeah. is that appropriate? <laughs> I know this is completely yeah. weird, but, but seriously, yeah. like whenever I see, uh, you know, you're in the airport is a lot of places where you see, cause guys are traveling and they're mm -hmm. going to, or from their destination. If I ever see someone in public and they're wearing camos and they're wearing the uniform, is it appropriate to just say, thank you? Is that okay? Like, I don't, I don't know. I just never wanted to disrespect somebody, but I always want to say thank you. I think that's very appropriate. It's something that I'm not, now I'm not saying that I want everybody to come up to me everywhere I go. It, it is kind of awkward because you're like, okay, thank, like right now I'm an instructor. Yeah. I'm, I'm in an opportunity to where I don't have to deploy necessarily. I don't have to, at this moment, I'm in a, basically a, a, a non-deployable job. But, so it is a little awkward at times when people are like, thank you for your service. And I'm like, I go to work every day right now. But yeah, it does mean a lot to people. And I can imagine if someone's, you know, in the airport in uniform and they're deploying or being separated from their family. And then you've got people coming up to them say, Hey, thank you for doing this. Hey, thank you for your, your service. Thank you for all that you, you're given and the sacrifices you made. I think that's very appropriate. And another thing that I think often goes by people that may not necessarily have exposure to the military lifestyle is the amount of hours away from family, away Absolutely. from birthdays, away yeah. from kids being born, wedding anniversaries, Christmases, I mean, holidays in general. And, you know, I've been fortunate enough to where I've been in 14 years and I haven't been able to miss any of those, but I know there's someone maybe listening who's been there and, and barely made any of those opportunities and moments in their lives. I still got about six years before I retire, but I, I don't know if I, I may be missing those moments. And it's just to hear someone come up and say, you know, thank you for your service. Thank you for all you do. Yeah, it, it does. It, it hits you, you know, in the feels a little bit and that affective and makes you feel good to, to hear it. Cause there is, you know, there, there's a ton of sacrifice. I would actually say, tell the spouses mm. if you see mm. them out and about, because mm -hmm. The spouses give so much. Yeah. My wife is a rock star because she has put her career on hold for 14 years to basically follow me around wow. everywhere. Now, I've taken her to Germany and <laughs> some, some pretty sweet spots, but right. yeah, I mean, she's, I mean, I couldn't imagine for nearly 20 years, a lot of spouse, 20, 30 years, spouses will put their careers on hold to follow their significant other around. And then also kids, 
because kids, it's tough going to a new school and yeah. every four or five years, you know, possibly bouncing from school to school. And my daughter has really good friendships in Germany. That was where she went to elementary school. And then she's gone to middle school in Alabama. And then we just found out we're going to be going to California pretty soon. So she's going to have California for high school. So that's a lot of, you know, you start establishing these connections, making these friendships. Now you're pulled and you got to go somewhere else. It's hard on them too. So I would definitely encourage any listeners out there, you know, if you see a military member out and about and, you know, in, in their uniform and they're with some family, definitely go up and thank the family for all that they do too, because huge sacrifice on their end. Buy them a meal. I mean, if you're out, if you're at dinner, buy, buy their meal. Let me pay yeah. for it. Like seriously, yeah. it's the least we can do. Because I, I want to go back to something you said, even though you're not actively, you know, serving in that way and that capacity, I don't want to lose sight of the fact that at some point, man, you said, I'm willing to die for you. Mm -hmm. And that's what I, I guess when I'm standing in the airport and somebody walks by me in camos, man, they have committed to die for me. <laughs> I don't jump know them. The bullet if you be. Jump, right. I mean, they, they, that is what is at stake here is, and man, I don't ever want to lose that fact, whether they're serving or not, even if they're no longer in service, man, at some yeah. point they were willing to die for me and my family, for the freedoms that we often take for granted. And I don't ever want to lose that. So anyway, man, I know it's not what we got on today. <laughs> Thank you for, yeah, for but, walking but it's through true, that. Though, regardless it's true. of what someone's political agenda is or, or religious views or what have you, I mean, we bottom line is people are people and yeah. you know we're able to have and do things that we do in this country because of those who have right. lost their lives for us so yeah i think that's a good point just that you know we don't lose sight of that well thank you i mean you and i get to be on a podcast today because of the freedoms that we have in this country 100 so, yeah and so i was on yours and now you're on mine so <laughs> tell us about yours man tell us all about the journey that became your podcast yeah. So the, the journey that became my podcast. Yeah. It, I, well, I tell people it, this had, has been something that had been brewing since 1993, back when it was AM FM radio. But <laughs> How about that? I was very fortunate enough to have a, a father that was 11 years. I was blessed to have his presence and he put the most into it to where he left such an impact on me. And I remember little conversations we would have with sitting on a stairwell talking or, you know, I would have had a bad day at school and he would pull me to the side in my room and just have a conversation with me about it. And those conversations really resonated with me. And my father unfortunately passed away, yeah. um, you know, June 31st or actually July 9th of 1993. And my world was just shaken up. I didn't know what to think of that. And then fast forward, you know, I also lost my sister. My sister was murdered when she was 14 years old. Goodness. It was just a really rough upbringing. And, I, you know, I always kind of struggled with it. Never really had an outlet to talk about it. Mental health was something that wasn't really, you know, pushed by, I mean, the Air Force does a phenomenal job of pushing it right now. But it was just one of those things with a stigma behind it. Do I want to go into mental health? Do I want to talk to someone? So during the pandemic, one of my mentors, he, he had a podcast at the time, the Llama Lounge, which was, you ever get a chance to go listen to them, they have some phenomenal stuff, but they had asked me to write an article for their, their website. And I wrote an article about what is our true legacy? What is it that, you know, we're really known for? And I was out in the, my garage when we were moving into this house and I was going through boxes and I found a box that was just labeled like my dad's stuff. Yeah. And I opened it up and it was trophies and plaques and mementos and all these things and articles and pictures. And as I'm flipping through them, I'm like, is this really our legacy? Like goes in a box, put in an attic, labeled dad's items. Right. But that's not what I, I don't remember my dad by playing football. I don't remember my dad by serving in the Navy or being a defense attorney or any of this stuff. I remember my dad is what he talked to me about in conversations we had. So that's what I remembered. And that's what I wrote about. I go on there to talk about it and got a really good response from people, people reaching out to me that people in the military that I had dealt with and worked in the same work center, never really conversed with them, but now they're reaching out and they're like, oh my gosh, I never knew this. And that got me thinking like, 
wow, there's, there's power here to people's stories. And while it's wise to learn from our experiences, it's even wiser to learn from the experiences of others. And when that happened, I said, okay, I'm sitting here teaching these instructors to be transparent and vulnerable and open up and be real and relatable with your students. There's something to this. Maybe I could get this out there on a bigger platform. And that's when I started Shadows Podcast. And yeah, got with my wife and basically asked her, you know, like for catchy name, I give her the credit, but she said, you know, we, we, these stories that are just bottled up and they're part of our, they're our shadows. They, they follow us, these dark spots throughout our whole life. And if we don't embrace them and bring them into the light, they'll continue to pull us down. And that's what it's all about. And the cool thing is I've had people like yourself, which give yourself credit. It was a great episode. A great episode. It's really, really good. <laughs> I hope so. Yeah, I hope so. But yeah, we, we, we get people on here who share their stories and, you know, they're just, they're real and they're raw and just very candid conversation. It's just, it's super cool to get someone on here and then make these connections. And then I think the even cooler part is they share so much and we're both so open with our, I don't even say their interviews or conversations to where next thing I know, boom, I've established a connection with this person. And yeah. because we've, we've spent that one hour of just really getting to know one another and, and, and just, like I said, being vulnerable and, and the power of storytelling. And, um, I think the one that really stood out to me was Jamie Valvano. I got on there mm. and I talked to her and we were sharing stories about her father and who uh, just utmost respect for Jim Valvano and everything he did as a head coach at NC state and his battle with cancer. But she told me, you know, you, you really helped show me the power of storytelling and um, m made me want to open up and share these moments about my dad. And it's okay to share those. And it's just, it's super rewarding, especially when someone else listening to it is, it's not just therapeutic for the guests, but it's therapeutic for listeners. And shout out to Nathan Coy with Wartime Leadership, but he was driving around with his son. He just adopted a son and. They were having a tough time connecting. They just, they, they weren't, he's like, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to get through to him. And they were listening to an episode and the guest on there was just basically saying, this is my life. This is what I've been through. And his mm -hmm. son just like turned the radio off and was like, this is my story and started telling mm -hmm. him his story. And he's like, man, tears were being shed in the car. We were having a really, you know, real conversation. And that moment helped bring me closer to my son. So I could close up shop after hearing that and, and say it was a success, but uh, yeah, you just never know whose story can help who. I think that's so true. I mean, I think one of the questions I get all the time is how you make money on podcast. I think people think I left the business world because I was making money on a pod. Man, you don't. And no. so it's all right. You don't. No, no. <laughs> like, I'm still in the red. <laughs> I'm telling you, like if, if you're doing this to make money, get out. Don't. That's why I think so many of them fail is because they, they see Joe Rogan or what's the guy's name? Guy, the kicker. McAfee, Pat McAfee. McAfee. They see Rogan and McAfee and they think, oh man, like these guys are getting million dollar deals with FanDuel or whatever the crap it is. And at the end of the day, like you don't, I mean, sorry, no. those guys had, those guys had network and, and look, man, if that ever happened, Hey, I, by the way, if anybody's listening, I know Trip and I would both take a check, be free, feel Open free to check. email me. Yeah. Feel free to email us. We will split it. Well, you but, give me food uh, vouchers. I would do it. <laughs> it's honestly, but you know, honestly, the, the, uh, the equity, emotional equity, the, the connections, um, man, that's why I do this and I do we're on today. Cause, cause you know, I had a connection and now I have a friendship and, and we text yeah. during Carolina games. I mean, like yeah. that, that's, that's the value in this. And, 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 uh, how many episodes have you done? Cause I think I shared a statistic with you. I'll share in a second. How many episodes have you done? Yeah. So the right now I just released at the time of recording, I think my 111th episode, but I think I've recorded all the way up into maybe one thirty. I got a move right. coming up, so I got to pre-record. <laughs> so that when I, <laughs> when I PCS, I could just sit there and do some editing <laughs> from the hotel room, but. Hey. Yeah, about one thirty. So I'll share that statistic with you. I think I shared it with you already offline, but a friend of mine sent me a text and he said, it said one per, if you've recorded over a hundred episodes, you're in the top 1% of podcasters. Just say anybody out there that says, Hey, cause I know a lot of people are like, oh, I want to start a podcast. Awesome. I don't think you realize how hard it is. <laughs> Most don't things. make it past eight. <laughs> Most don't make it past eight. Two things. Mm -hmm. One, it's a lot of work and a lot of work by yourself. You got to 
you got to be willing to the grind. Yeah. You know, again, Pat McAfee, Barstool, Rogan, they have an entire team behind them. Those guys yeah. just show up, they talk, and then they show, they leave. Yep. That ain't me. And I'm pretty sure it ain't you. <laughs> I do my right. own cover art. I do my own editing. I do my own. I had a buddy of mine in the military do my graphic for free. Every yeah. single thing. Yeah. I've, I've spent more on getting stuff that I'm like, oh, this would be nice for the podcast, but it's, you were talking about getting stuff for, you know, open checks for us. Just somebody pay my, my, you know, Riverside or Zoom. My hosting, let's, right? Let's do that. Right. But no, it is. No, and, and you, no doubt. A lot of time. A lot of time. A lot of time. And it's lonely. I mean, I think we mm -hmm. talked about this before, man. It's, it's, I think podcasting is really lonely It because, you know, at the end of the day, I remember back when blogging was cool and I think it's still got some life, but when blogging was cool, you had Google analytics and you had all these sites and you could go and you could find out who was on your website at that moment. <laughs> um, yeah. I still have yet to find that in podcasting and it's not that I'm looking around for it, but I just like you put stuff out in the world and you just don't know, but that's why I want to come all the way back to that story you just told. That's why you do it. I mean, mm -hmm. honestly, like for anybody listening to this, that wants to start a podcast and I don't want to speak for you, but I would say. That's why we do it. You know, it's that one email, that one text that um, run into somebody at the grocery store. That's like, dude, that episode with so-and-so man, you know, like that's why you do it. And if, if you're not going to do it for that, then honestly don't do it because you're not going to do it for cash unless you're just, you know, going to bring something new to the table. There's way too many podcasts out there. Um, yeah. do it for, do it for the equity of the story you just told, you know, things like that. If you're, if you're going to enjoy things like that then that's absolutely start one today but if not then don't do it for the money i, I don't know i don't want to discourage people but that's just my thoughts yeah it, I, I love talking to people who are getting into it and they're like i'm trying to get a sponsor i'm trying to get this i'm like get four episodes and <laughs> get your four episodes first and sponsors will not come running after you for a while the analytic part when i first started i was guilty of looking at that yeah and i'm like Wow, I thought it would take off quicker than this, but I've I've been playing around even different. Like I, I'm not a, a a clout chaser. I'm not a right. I can't tell you how many people are on my Instagram page. I can't tell you how many people listen per episode. And at about episode fifty, I stopped that because I was driving yeah. myself crazy. But uh, yeah, the, the the crazy thing with it is, is you start pumping out these episodes, and then you you get to a point where you're like, and this is this is a lot. But then you hear something, and you're like, motivates me though. That so was really I do it. good. To, it, it's crazy when you have a someone who spent their life as a preacher, and they said that the episode with the comedian helped them open up and share their story. And you're like, how did that even connect? Right, uh, right. But yeah, they listen to it and, it and it motivates you. But yeah, if you're if you're chasing the the numbers and the sponsors and the cash and think you're going to be doing snow angels and money, you're going to be sorely, sorely upset and mistaken for this, this false idea of what it is, but, and it's, you know, it's, it, it's cool too, because like the other day I was, so I just recorded my Super Bowl episode with David Tyree and nice. I think you and I had this conversation. Oh yeah. It's one of those where I'm getting ready to record and I'm super nervous. Yeah. And I'm talking to someone with the biggest catch in probably NFL history and, um, we're, we're about to record and I, you know, I was telling my wife, I'm like, I'm so lucky. I'm so lucky right. if I didn't do right. this, I wouldn't have these connections and these conversations. And I've got people that I've recorded with her in California that I have more people from podcasting in California than I really do military people right now to where I'm like, we're heading down there and they're like, yeah, let's meet up and awesome. grab something to eat and do stuff together. And the, the connection piece, I think is your profit that you get from it. Is, 100%. That's the payoff. It's like you said, I got somebody to talk Carolina basketball with while they're playing. So that's right. That's <laughs> my frustrations at times, but yeah, I, I hate this team. It's so <laughs> I love them. Depending on how they do in March, but yeah, we'll um, see. We'll see. But yeah. But yeah, anyway, that's no, I think the money absolutely. is the connections. It really is. I saw on the encouraging side of podcasting, like. There's really, really cool things that can happen. So I don't cool. want to discourage anyone that wants to start a podcast. I, I don't. I still to this day, the sports fan in me, every time yeah. I have a sports related guest, I am freaking out like right. a new toy just got released at 
KB toys right. or something. I'm going, I dated myself with that reference, but. Well, you I, use I, toys are us because they're out of business, but that's fine. Yeah, well, well, they're at, they're at, I think, Macy's now. They have little pop-ups, <laughs> but, but yeah, so I, I absolutely think it's the coolest thing because every, every single guest I've had on my show, I've been in awe of their stories and military people. I mean, I had Levito Jr. and, and Etchberger's son. These are Medal of Honor recipients and I had their son, oh. sons sitting there talking to me about their stories. And then, and I'm in awe. And then I yeah. do my rebound series in March and I'm listening to these guys that I grew up watching play bass. I had their trading cards and right. I'm sitting here on a call with them talking to them. Yeah. Internally, I'm, I'm in awe of this. Yeah. I have to be a professional on the outside, but inside I'm like, this is the coolest freaking thing ever. And my poor wife, I get done. I'm like, guess who I just talked to and it's interviewed like, yeah. and, and she's like, okay, whatever. but I love <laughs> right. it and, and I'll never. <laughs> You know, I'll, I'll, I'll never get tired of it. And I think when I do start getting tired of it, I think that's when it's time for me to either hang it up or reevaluate what I'm doing with. But right now it's, it's a wild ride. It is a wild ride. And, and it's funny. It's so funny. You say, cause you walk in the kitchen, you're like, Hey guys, like I just got so-and-so like some, never TikTok, some, some TikTok influencer, you know, it's like, Hey, I, mean, I just got this, I just got yeah. this guy. And this is my like, big break. Another head coach. Okay. This dad, is the cool. one that'll put me over the top. <laughs> Well, let me tell you how cool was. Yeah. <laughs> and they, they don't even listen. They don't even care. That's like, well, I don't even know yeah. your podcast. I don't even that's know how to find it. That's the best. It. Oh yeah. That's the best when I tell like, uh, A, I tell my wife about it and then she's like, cool. And then I end up recording it and I tell her about it. She's like, oh, when did you get that one lined up? I told you about two weeks ago. But my mom is my best listener who's never heard an episode. She, I, I recorded with someone and I said, Hey, I, oh gosh, it was someone basketball related. Jeff Fry. Oh, nice. Point yeah, from, from Loyola Marymount. That's right. So I, I did an episode with him and my mom loved the whole 90 Loyola Marymount. I hate to say love the story, but the, the story of Bill right. Kimball with the left-handed 100%. shot. percent Right. Their dedication to Hank Gathers. And by the way, Hank Gathers, most underrated player of all time. Absolutely. This generation doesn't really know about, but, um, total sidebar but no i told my mom i was interviewing him <laughs> and i recorded it now, the episode wasn't going to be released for like three or four weeks and she's like i heard it i heard it that was a <laughs> really good episode and i i was like mom i haven't released it yet she's like oh i had it mixed up with another one there was no one on my released episodes that even had a basketball background at that point so i don't know who she was what she was talking about but now when i talk to her Every episode, I just roll with it. I'm like, yeah, that was a good episode. I love that. Or people are like, hey, man, you know, I, man, I, I enjoy the podcast. I'm like, oh, cool. Which episode did you listen to? They're like, hang oh. on. <laughs> then they grab their phone and they're, they'll like, throw some random guest out there. <laughs> like, you just what? saw me tweet about it, man. You didn't listen. <laughs> anyway. What did you like about it? <laughs> oh, oh like, man. So did much. You, <laughs> so, did you hear the story with Craig Elo? And they're like, no, I, I you didn't yeah, listen. that I, I got so many notes here about it that I wanted to talk to you about one day. But right. anyway, all right. I don't know if anybody else is enjoying this conversation, but I know podcasters was enjoying this good stuff. Like all I right, said, so I'm listen. pulling the numbers down. All right, let's talk about where do we find where do people find the podcast? Because it sounds like a lot. It's a lot like mine and not to be like the guy I just talked about, but I, I need to go back and listen to many of your episodes because you've had some amazing guests. I have not listened to it. I, I'm the worst podcaster in the world because I don't listen to podcasts, but so many not, though. That's just so many. But anyway, you have an amazing podcast. Where do people find it? Yeah, you can find me on any of the major podcast platforms, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, theshadowspodcast.com. So really easy to remember, but our site is kind of, it's got everything on there. You can scroll over to the right and it has all of the different podcast links to take you directly to it where you can subscribe and start following the show. We also, I'm really bad with YouTube, especially since I'm a one-man show. Same. Same. I'm trying to get, I can't figure out the algorithms and all this. Same. But bear with me, folks. If you go give yeah. me a, a subscribe, I would really appreciate it. But no, it's uh, anywhere you, you listen to podcasts, we're, we're pretty easy to find just the shadows podcast. And then Instagram, I believe it's at the underscore shadows podcast. And yeah, we got handles on YouTube now. So now I am just nice. straight up right. at right. the shadows podcast, but yeah, definitely go check us out. And you know, if you listen to an episode, you really like it, 
send me a message. Tell me what really stood out to you. Or if you want to send me a message, you can go to leave a review and leave it in that one. <laughs> tell me go. which one stood out. But it's really cool for me to hear, uh, you know, why people selected a different episode because we are very diverse. We have veterans, authors, CEOs, even though everybody's a CEO now, I guess. But yeah, so <laughs> I, but athletes, I mean, it, it's just really diverse. And, and that was one of the things we wanted to get to is I didn't want to pigeonhole my show is just, you know, only military people. I wanted to let that sports reporter that never got a chance to get a big right. break, interview some of these people and to talk about these auth talk to authors of books that I've just absolutely loved. Um, but cancer survivors, I mean, mm. substance abuse survivors, PTSD, we, we tackle all those, those tough topics. And it's just really, really interesting to hear what people have been through, but yeah, we got a little something for everybody. We've probably got, we have a hundred and some episodes. We should have something that really stands out to you or, or a story and uh, yeah, just happy to share with everybody. Well, the, the one thing that's true is that we all have a story. Um, mm -hmm. so that's never going to go out of business, whether or not people tend to you know, share it or appreciate other people's stories. That's, yeah. that's not me, me or you, but you know, the one thing that is true is that it's recession proof. There's a lot of things to be said about stories because we all got one and, you know, a lot of people want to share them. And I think when we share our stories, we help somebody. Uh, it doesn't always have to be a sad story. It can be a, an inspiring story. It can be a story about how we won or lost or whatever it might be, but man, we all got one. And, yeah. and, and there's a lot of people when I started, I, I honestly wasn't targeting top talent or anything like that. I still don't, I don't, I don't care, man. Everybody's got a story. And honestly, I'd almost rather hear from a story from my next door than the most popular Kardashian in the world. I know that'll get a lot of clicks, but you know, I, I want the story from my next door neighbor or, you know, anyone that someone served in the military, like, like the conversation you and I've had today, man, I'd much rather listen to this than some Kardashian tell me about something that doesn't make sense to me. Cause that's the world I don't live in. Yeah. I'd rather hear about, you know, a story that I can appreciate and, and identify with. So yeah, that's, yeah, 100%. It's, it's that relatability, seeing what people have been through. It's just, there's, there's so much power to that. And, and I, I agree with you sometimes, you know, chasing the big fish, but some of my best episodes have been with people who I'm like, wow, we right. unpacked that. Where did that come right. from? That's right. I did not know this was going to be as powerful as an episode. And then some of my episodes that I'm like, if I had to rack and stack the ones that would be, you know, 120, 130 on that list would be the ones that I, I'm like, probably got me some big clicks, but they, they felt like they were holding back a lot and didn't want to share right. too much. So unfortunately I hadn't had much of any of those, which, yeah. So I, I don't know, I, I, that must say something about the way I ask the, the questions at times, because people, you know, will typically tell me like, yeah, you, you ask the good questions. You, you absolutely ask the right thing. Credit to my wife degree in psychology. I, I'll there tell her when, when I do get her into it and I'm like, Hey, I'm interviewing this person. She can think of some really good questions. So if you listen to one and the guest credits me for, wow, that's a really tough question. It was probably Teresa Bodenheimer, not <laughs> Trip Bodenheimer that came up with it. So that's all the credit to her. Well, you had me on the hot seat, man. And I'm going to warn you now, your stats that day are not going to be good. So don't, if you don't look at stats, really don't look at them that day. Cause I don't know how much traffic I'm going to drive for you, but I enjoyed our conversation. And honestly, you did have me off on my heels quite a bit. Uh, you got a book title out of it. What was it? Well, Jesus, don't remember. Jesus mom and Freddie Mercury. That was it. Yeah. So what well, the, the funny thing was, I talked to someone after that and theirs was, there, it, it, just to have some context, if anyone's not heard it, but it was dinner for three with three people who are no longer with us. That was his answer. And he's like, I think I've just named my book. Right? So, someone about a week later, theirs was like, Jesus, mom, and, and someone else. I can't remember, but I was like, Hey, you're going to have to change that answer up a little bit. That's already a published book now. So right. it's mom gold though. American. It's gold. <laughs> gold, baby. Definitely. Uh, right. Marketing definitely captures your attention. I'm dead. Give us the links one more time. <laughs> yeah. The, <laughs> the shadows podcast.com Instagram at the underscore shadows podcast and uh, yeah, YouTube at the shadows podcast. I think that's pretty much covered it. Any, you see a, a nice 
hold it up there. If you're, if you're looking and there's other shadows podcast, it's the nice little, it's kind of a spinoff of the 1930s, 1940s, the shadows comic series. And he was also, he was a radio broadcaster. So he's a the radio announcer. Now he's a podcaster. So hence the, the bird for the military look definitely play off of that image a little bit, but yeah, definitely check us out. Let me know what you think. Well, the five people that listen to my podcast, please go, <laughs> please go <laughs> rate review and follow <laughs> the shadows. Podcast. You got my numbers. You saw my numbers before we started. <laughs> no, seriously. Anybody listening to this, please go rate, follow and give them a review. I, I think I've got like 17 in two years. I don't have a lot of reviews or stars. Hard. I don't, I don't know. I, I'm not, I'm not the guy that's going to beg for them. We, I don't care. Like I we just, actually did a streams of giving. I think this is, this was the coolest thing I did since I started podcasting this past December, I partnered up with about 10 other podcasts, like-minded podcasters. And we basically did a thing where it was a friendly competition, where we had to ask our audience to leave us reviews, best episode and why. And we did almost like fantasy football. We had a, a buy-in, all the money got put in one pot. We all played for a certain nonprofit. And I was playing for Gatto's Pups and Pals and Joe Gatto from Impractical Jokers. Right. So definitely helping out veteran, disabled dogs. And yeah, mine ended up winning. So thank you, Shadow's nice. audience. And I was able to donate all of that money around the holiday season to getting some, some animals, much needed homes for them. And that was honestly the coolest thing we did because it brought awareness to like 10 different charities that... You know, typically we just would have gone and, you know, without being noticed, but it was really cool to put a spotlight on those. I don't, I'm going to speak it into existence now and we haven't talked about it. I just feel like this isn't the last conversation you and I are going to have. I, I think, no, I don't know, good stuff. They are, look, our pod, our podcasts are way too similar for us to not do something in the future. So, so everybody gets a peek behind the curtain here. We're, well, let's talk offline. We let's do it. Let's about. do it. <laughs> because I love what you're doing. I love your podcast. Although, again, not to be that guy at the grocery store, I, I honestly need to listen to it more, but I, I don't even have to because I know what you're doing. I know where your heart is. I know why you do it. And man, that's that alone is enough for me. And hopefully anybody that's listened to this to also go find that one because uh, that's much mine. I mean, it, mine's messy and whatever else, but it's all about the story. And man, I don't know how this happened. I don't know how we... I think it's Twitter. What's your Twitter, by the way? Because that's, I think, how we met. So my Twitter is easy to remember. It is, it's at the Shadows Pod. I, the thing that stinks is it was a Shadows podcast like five years ago. Yeah. And they took all the good handles. So anything I go to, I, I wanted yeah. like the uniform, yeah. same handle for every platform. But I just confuse my people. So I have a link tree. There you go. What, is Linktree something you can rattle off or is that? It, is yeah, it's, it's Linktree slash the Shadows Podcast, I believe. There you go. Linktree, the Shadows Podcast. The all Shadows Podcast on all the platforms. And man, Trip, I appreciate you, man. This this has been a lot of fun tonight. And I don't think it's the last time we're going to talk because I think we got more to talk about. But go Heels. <laughs> go Heels. I appreciate you, man. Talk soon. Thanks for joining us for another episode of the Unscripted Podcast with your host, Aaron Conrad. Be sure to like, share, and follow on all your favorite podcast platforms. Also, make sure to check out our song, When I Think About You, on Spotify, Apple Music, or wherever you enjoy your favorite songs. We'll, we'll see, see you next time on Unscripted with Aaron Conrad. Well, you love